Hello students, when you are coming to school in the morning, have you ever wondered how the traffic is managed? It's the greatest problem we feel, no? So, especially when you are stuck in the red signal, it's really difficult. And you wonder how on earth does the police manage this traffic and how is he able to take away all the chaos there and still have a smooth flow of traffic that's called traffic management sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't work why it doesn't work is lack of planning but here we have a case study about a country city called Curitiba now this Curitiba is somewhere in Parana district in Brazil okay and this Curitiba had a master plan in 1965 they put forth a master plan until date it's a role model for traffic management in the whole world people just look up to the security bar to see how they have managed and are still managing remember this is 1965 and now it's 2020 and still they have no issues because of the plan that they had put forth so many years back Okay, so here we are going to learn what was that plan and how were they successful. Now if you see, look at this picture very uh, carefully, you would see in the lines of red, it would show you, see there's one here, two, three, four and five, those lines of red, they are called as arterial roads. Okay. In these arterial roads, there were always only express buses that would be going from one corner to the other. Then we also have the green lane. So this, this is called as the green line that also will go from one place to the other. That's also far part of the express buses. But they have something called the trinary road system. Tri stands for three. So in all these arterial roads, what they would have is the main road would be so something like this. And then there will be parallelly there will be a small road on this side and on this side. And this would be moving this way and this would be this way. So there is a one way traffic on two places parallel to the main arterial road. Okay, so, the, so what happens is all the fast moving buses and the cars only will be allowed into this and all other things will be on the parallel roads with one way. This is called as the trinary road system which was a great success. And then came the next that next highlight of this is they also had feeder buses and inter-district buses. What these feeder buses and inter-district buses would do is they would come and they would join somewhere in the arterial roads and from the arterial roads these feeder buses will not move, will not ply. Only the express buses would go. So they would be a uh, uh, these feeders and inter-district buses would just come and drop in the passengers here and then they would go into the main buses, main line buses. Now here what happens is they have a very subsidized bus fare and if they get that one for per day, they can travel anywhere throughout the day free of charge. So free of charge in the sense one fare and they are able to move around anywhere throughout the day. That's one thing. Second thing is people from the villages, they can bring their trash. So that was a beautiful way of an environmental thing. Okay, all the trash and the waste would come and in exchange for that bus fares would be given. So bus tokens would be given, tickets would be given. So they were able to travel. At the same time, the waste also was eradicated okay so that's another highlight the third highlight about this is about the there is also something called bi articulated buses this is by far the biggest in the world and this ha can ferry up to 270 passengers because they go in the main roads it is not a problem at all and see these are the bi-articulated buses. 
okay so they have three kind of compartments and they can ferry passengers and they are pretty fast they look very slow but they are quite fast and they also work on biodiesel okay 100% biodiesel so environment friendly and they are able to ferry many people and as a result many of them they most of them have cars but cars are staying at home and they always prefer to come and take the public transport actually this transport comes in a collaboration of public and private collaboration and it really works very well in that thing and the next highlight of this is tube stations Curitiba has tube stations which we have not seen anywhere else see these are the tube stations actually what happens is these are the stations where the buses would stop it's like our bus stops here they call them as tube stations the shape itself is like a tube and the height would be the same as that of the bus so one two advantages of this is it's very friendly for the old aged people as well as for people with any handicap disabled people can just enter without any difficulty there will be also on one side there are steps and on the other side there is a ramp so they can just ca come very easily and the second one is they are also protected and the fare and other things bus fares and tickets are given in this tube station so this is a very important highlight of Curitiba and then you have the different buses also flying so this makes this Curitiba a world model till date and it stands very good.